All right, hello everyone, good evening. Um, hopefully we all got a chance to kind of um, settle in. I seen a lot of hellos, everybody's like really live in the chat box. Um, and okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, this week we are going to talk about time management. And for those of you all who don't have me as an instructor, I am Sabrina Adelson. I am one of the behavioral science instructors. If you look in the chat box or if you look under the attendees, you will see that your instructor will be here as well. We have um, Ms. Brandy is here, um, Ms. Natika is here, as well as um, Michelle. So if you guys have any questions, um, you know, specifically for your instructor, you can um, go ahead and select their name in the chat box and you can, you know, send them a private message. Or if you just have a general question, they're going to be in there managing the chat box. So feel free to ask those questions. Um, some of you guys are kind of um, veterans now. I can say to our go-to trainings, um, this is your third one, so you kind of know how it goes. And for our new ones, welcome. If this is your first um, go-to, we're very excited to have you. And, you know, if this isn't your first one, then, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm saying, so can everyone see my screen or no? Okay, so no... What about now? Ah, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I kind of wanna see how you guys are gauging the class so far. So how is everybody doing with week three? You kind of um, should be getting settled into behavioral science. You should be getting the hang of turning in your assignments in on time. We are talking about time management after all. So we wanna make sure you, oh, I'm seeing some good ones. I'm loving it, pretty good, smooth. Oh, I love this one, Chrissy, staying strong and motivated. That's what I like to hear. I hope you all are. Um, a lot of times when it comes to educating adults, we should know that you have to be, um, you know, that intrinsic motivation is really, really necessary. Um, you know, it has to come from within. So very good. Oh, I, I understand. Sometimes it can be a struggle. You know, as adults and as learners, we have to tend to balance our personal lives. Um, for others, you have to balance not only your personal, your work life. If you have a family and you have kids at home, and you're trying to do schoolwork, it can be a bit much. So I can completely understand. Um, no, right now everybody should see my face <laughs> on the screen and I'm about to switch the slide. So can everybody, okay. So it looks like it might just be you, Alexandria. You might want to exit it out and then go back in and see if that's gonna um, work for you. All right, moving on, I have a quote up on the screen that says, success is being uncomfortable short-term for a long-term goal. So I want you guys to think about that for a second. Let it sink in. Now I want you to tell me, how does this apply to you right now in your degree program? So what am I saying when I say success is being uncomfortable short-term for a long-term goal? So let me, all right, I'm starting to see some answers pop up. I'm gonna give everybody, you know, some time to write out what they want to say, and then I'll go through a couple of the responses. All right. I'm going to start going through because we're getting quite a bit now. Um, Jonathan said to get outside of your comfort zone. I do like that one. Um... Hold on, hold on a 
it's scrolling up really quickly on me. Anthony said, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's another good one. Um, sometimes stuff happens and long term is tricky. You all are really understanding the whole concept of this quote. Oftentimes when you are in school for we're going to use school as the example because that's, you know, where we all are. Um, you are in a situation where, you know, it's you feel like it's unmanageable. Um, sometimes you might feel like life is getting in the way and you just feel so overwhelmed with everything. And just thinking about those goals and just thinking about why you're here in the first place will kind of help you plow through. So if you think back to when you were doing your why, always keep that on your forefront. Always keep that in the back of your mind or even in the front of your mind, I should say, whenever you're going through those challenges or those obstacles, because, you know, they will come, you know, challenges happen. Um, that's the way life is designed. And when, you know, you do face those obstacles and you have those challenges, just remember, you know, you're going through this for the short term, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a reason why you are in school. There's a reason why you're balancing your job, you're balancing your family, and um, you have a goal in the end. So the whole purpose is that all of these weeks and everything that you guys are learning, they're building on top of each other so that you can see, you know, in the end, you're going to be prepared when you dive into your degree program. So I want you all to keep that in mind that, um, you know, it's temporary. Sometimes, you know, our struggles come and it's hard for the time being, but always remember why it is that you're doing what you're doing. Julian said the thing about the level of uncomfortable is that a lot of people won't let themselves go there. Um, the, they avoid it before ever experiencing being uncomfortable. And that is true. Um, I think it's human nature to not want to feel uncomfortable. You know, it's, you, it's one of those feelings. It's uncomfortable. You don't want to be in that space. But sometimes you need to be there in order to grow. You know, um, we have to get out of our comfort zones. So very good with that. Thank you. All right, we are moving on. Our agenda for today is going to be, um, we're going to talk about what time management is. Um, we're going to talk about um, procrastination, the Pomodoro technique. No, I'm not talking about pizza. There's a couple of pizza places out there like that. Um, I put in a few principles this week for us to talk about just so you guys can see if there's one that kind of fits you. So there's not a one size fits all. So um, um, under life distractions, we're going to talk about the urgency ma uh, matrix and prioritizing. We're going to talk about the 80-20 rule, um, which some of you guys might already be familiar with because that's um, a term that you'll hear a lot in the business industries, you'll hear it um, in film. You're also going to be able to hear this in the music industry as well. You um, often hear of the 80-20 rule. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And then we're going to go into the week three project. All right, what is time management? So time management, you know, it. It sounds like it's pretty self-explanatory. You're like, oh, it's managing your time. But basically, it's a range of skills and tools that we have in order to help us meet our goal. Um, you know, it's not just important in work, but managing your time is important to balance your family life. It's important to balance your personal life, like relationships and friendships. And it's also very important, obviously, in your career field and in your schoolwork. So learning how to balance out your choices is really important. But, you know, also wanting to make sure that you are utilizing your time to the best of your ability. So you're not just, you know, wasting time. So as we go through that, I want you guys to kind of think about that. Um, think of the quality of your time management. Think of the accuracy of the decisions that you make every day. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your decisions are not just, you know, what you do, but how you do it and when you do it. So um, make sure as we're going through the week, you know, it's more than just, 
oh, okay, I have five minutes here, I'm gonna get that done. But the five minutes extra that you have here, are you making sure that you're prioritizing? Are you making sure that you are doing the things that actually need to be done beforehand? Um, for example, the things that are more urgent, are you working on those? And as we go through um, tonight, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. All right, now I'm gonna give you all a chance to kind of, um, you know, tell me a couple of things that you might already know. Um, we'd love for the sessions to be a little bit more interactive where it's just more than, you know, me talking to myself. So we are obviously in the age of technology and um, there's gonna be different types of um, apps that you might use. There's gonna be different things that keep you organized, you know, not just in your personal life and your academic life, but in your career as well. Some of you all are very familiar with your in, your chosen industry, what it is that you're studying because you already have experience in it. And others, you know, you guys are just now learning. So what I want you to do is um, in the chat box, if there's any tools that help people organize their time, that help them organize what it is that they're doing, or if there's any apps on a phone that's really good that you all use, please go ahead and share those for me and the chat box. And I love when you all give me these types of responses because I end up learning something new myself. I already have some of them popping up, Google Drive, Calendar, Notepad, Microsoft Teams. Oh, that's a good one. Notes on app, more Google Drive. Does anybody have like any, um, I, say, I saw Trillo, Memo Pads, Dropbox, To-Do List, I use my clock for everything. I like that. Desk calendar, Google Keep, reminder sets as alarm. I like that one as well. Calendar link to Alexa. Oh, that would be fun. Like Alexa, you know, got to remind me what I'm doing. All right, I'm seeing some good stuff here. Um, you all just also remember, if you know you've, you come up with something later and you didn't get a chance to share, always feel free to go into the um, community discussion board or even this week's discussion board and share with your classmates. The whole purpose of being here is to, you know, have a sense of community. You all should be here, you know, for each other. And if you have a great idea and you just want to share or you saw like, you know, in a post that you're reading, um, you know, this week under time management and under your reply and you're like, oh, you know, I use this app that will help you manage, you know, your time in this area better. Feel free to do that for your classmates. Um, that would really help out. So thank you. Thank you for that. Now we're going to play a little game I like to call What Am I? So I'm going to um, read off um, four different items and I'm going to give you clues basically. Once I give you a clue, you are going to guess what um, I am. I'm not going to give you all the answers until the very end and we can see if you got all of them correct. So get ready. Remember, I'm not going to give you all the answers until the end. These are all time management tools. So just think about it and then we'll see what you guys come up with. All right, the first one, I'm gonna start you guys off a little slow here with the, um, I can be found on my Android or iPhone. I've been around for a long time. You can input upcoming dates and I have many different forms and features. I'm seeing a lot of calendars, lots of calendars, reminder calendar, calendar calendar, reminder, Google Calendar, an app, planner, notes. I'm give everybody a chance to answer. You can't put in your responses after I give you the answers. So put in all your responses now. I see calendar, 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 iPhone, 
All right, for the most part, it's looking like everybody's going around the same area. Um, David, we are playing a game called What Am I? So I'm reading out the clues, and once I read those clues, you're going to guess what time management tool I am. I'm going to give you a second to read those clues. I'll read them one more time for you, and then I'm going to move on to the next one. It says, I can be found on an Android or an iPhone. I've been around for a long time. You can input upcoming dates and have many different forms and features. And I just saw your response. I got another calendar and I got an alarm. All right, we're moving on to number two. All right, number two of the time management tool that you are trying to guess, what am I? I allow you to access your um, documents virtually anywhere. I can be used to keep your school assignments secure. I can be used to share documents. I can create private links and access. Again, I allow you to access your documents virtually anywhere. I can be used to keep your school assignments secure. I can be used to share documents and I can create private links and access. I see Google Drive, Cloud or Drive. I see a lot of Google Drive. I hope you guys are not just writing what your other classmates wrote. OneDrive works too. The Almighty Cloud. <laughs> Someone said no. I'm getting a couple of laughs on there. OneDrive. Yes, I guess it has proven useful in the last few weeks. I guess when in doubt, copy. <laughs> Don't do that. Do not copy when in doubt. When in doubt, always ask a question. PowerPoint. Yes, we will have to ask. If we are in doubt, we will not copy. Very, very good. All right, I'm moving on to number three. Yes, no infringement technology these days, I tell you. All right, number three. I'm getting a little bit harder here. I've been around for a long time. I can be written on paper or created electronically. I make remembering things a lot easier. I can be simple or creative. See, now I'm finally getting some different answers. I read that a little fast. I'll go through this one, one more time. I've been around for a long time. I can be written on paper or created electronically. I make remembering things a lot easier. I can be simple or creative. I'm seeing notes, schedule, messages, files, notebook, list. I see a no idea, sticky notes, notepad, Google Drive. Oh, this is, I guess this is my doozy because I'm getting various answers for number three. All right, office. I'll give you guys about another 30 seconds and then we'll move on to the last one. A brain. <laughs> I guess we could always use a brain as a time management tool. Textbook. All right, now I think some of us are just throwing any of our answers out there and seeing which one sticks. Great plan. If you don't know, take a guess calendar, all assets. All right. Oh, I got a voice recorder. Speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm moving on in about 10 seconds. All right, moving on to the last one. Number four. I can be a tool on a phone. Oh, I didn't put I am. I am used in the kitchen. I am used in the classroom. I can help you keep track of time and I've been around for a long time. I can be a tool on a phone. I am used in the kitchen. I am used in the classroom. 
I can help you keep track of time. And I've been around for a long time. I see clock, timer, alarm. That one was too easy. Clock in general. <laughs> Calendar, clock app. I don't think that one was too easy. Well, maybe. Maybe these two might have been the last two. No, some of you guys are just too good at this. Or we're using our um, resources like Google. <laughs> Granny, I like that one. All right, we are going to go through the answers now. And then we'll see if anybody got all four of them correct. All right, the first one was I can be found on an Android or an iPhone. I've been around for a long time. You can input upcoming dates and many different forms and features. If you said calendar, you were correct. So hopefully everybody got that right. Give yourself a pat on the back if you got calendar. If you did not get calendar, it's okay. You still got three more opportunities. All right, number two. I allow you to access your documents virtually anywhere. I can be used to keep your school assignments secure. I can be used to share documents. I can create private links and access. If you said cloud, OneCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, you were correct. This is basically any cloud that you can store your information and access it later. So very, very good. And if you said Google Drive, you get extra points because that's mostly what we've been using for our assignment. Yes, yes, extra points. Look at all these extra points, I'm telling you. <laughs> Cody said he has 2.5 out of 4 so far. I love it. So if you have extra points, you get a point and a half. So if you've gotten two right, you have 2.5. Very good. So if you got that one correct, give yourself a pat on the back, and we are moving on. Oh, somebody got a triple score. Excuse me. Look at all these scores. Like the score, I don't even know who's like creating the points at this time, but it looks like some people got even more points. All right, we're moving on to number three. I've been around for a long time. I can be written on paper or created electronically. I make remembering things a lot easier and I can be simple or creative. This is the one that tripped a lot of people up. So if you went with a to-do list, you are correct. So how many people got that? I got a whole bunch of no's. Oh, yes. Yes. You guys should see maybe like a little trend going on here. Um, part of our assignment, you know, for this week's project, if you've already looked at it, that's one of the things that you're going to have to do a calendar, um, a to-do list, and then, you know, eventually they're just going to have to upload things onto Google Drive. Oh, it's okay if you didn't get any right yet. You still got one more opportunity. One more opportunity. And then, yes, if you wrote notes, technically it's the same thing. I think notes on your phone is like the list of our future, like our current like the age of technology. I'm still used to writing things on, you know, paper and pen. I still make a list when I go to a grocery store on a sheet of paper and I like sticky notes. Even though your notes on your phone can do just about the same thing. So I understand if you wrote notes, you can get that one too. Yes, yes, see, I, I'm, I aim to please. If you got notes or to-do list, you got the answer right. All right, we are moving on to the last one. It's your last chance to get one of these right. I can be a tool on a phone. 
Um, I'm used in the kitchen. I'm used in the classroom. I can help you keep track of time. I've been around a long time. They use these like so much in elementary school. Um, last, let's go for four out of four. It is a timer. So if you went with a timer, then you were correct. I only saw a few of those. So um, yeah, a timer. Yeah, no, I don't know if clock is the same thing. Because think of the timer, you know. But I guess, because I guess you got, you know, kept track of time. Maybe I should have gave you guys something else saying that, you know, you got to stop time or something or a specific amount of time. So if you said alarm, I'll give you that one. If you said clock... I don't want to, but I'll give it to you. You got it right. Because I should have gave like something that says you'll stop time some kind of way. No, don't take the L. Don't take. How about you get a half point since we came up with these half points? <laughs> so, so you got like a half point. All right, so we got a couple of 3.5s out there. So great job. Somebody got a 23.725. I'm not sure how you came up with that score, but congratulations. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and move on. Hopefully you guys liked our little game that will, you know, get your mind thinking of different um, time management tools that you guys have in your disposal that you can use every day. All right, moving on to procrastination, my lazy cat. This isn't my cat per se, but this looks like my cat. All right, so how many times are you thinking that you kind of meant to do something and you keep putting it off? Um, you're thinking that your willpower is just not there. You just can't get yourself together. You know, you're just laying around and it's not that you don't have the time to do it. It's just that you don't feel like doing it. That's it. It's you just don't want to do it. There's no there's no reason you didn't do it. You just did not feel like doing it. Well, that happens to the best of us. Um, a lot of times the reason is we tend to feel overwhelmed or, you know, we had a busy day and we just can't bring ourselves to do the things that we do not like to do. Basically, that's what it just boils down to. You don't do it because you don't like to do it or you're feeling overwhelmed and you just decide to shut down altogether because I got too much to do. I'm just going to do nothing. So, how are we going to fix that? I'm going to give you guys a powerful tool to help you in procrastination. So, I want you to kind of think about it for a minute. Yes, this is like a, a secret tool that everybody needs to know. And this is going to help you. Well... The secret tool is to make it easier. Basically, that is the simplest tool is to make it easier. And what I mean by making it easier is breaking down any task that you have and creating it into like little tiny chunks. So if you have something that you really just don't like to do. And again, I have to put my disclaimer out there. This is why I'm going to talk about different techniques um, throughout this lecture tonight, because for some people, they like to plow through and just get it done. And then other people, this really, really works. Um, those of you guys who feel overwhelmed by a large task, one of the best things that you can do is to really just break it down and handle it into small chunks. So if you're one of those people who really just get overwhelmed and decides to just shut down completely, I am talking to you. So we're going to go through this technique for like a couple. I'm just going to play um, the first half of the video, and then I'll talk to you guys about how exactly you're going to do that.
We procrastinate because we believe that a project or task is too big to finish. But when you break that huge task into 25-minute segments, it becomes easily achievable. The Pomodoro Technique was developed by Francesco Cirillo in the 1980s. If you don't know, Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. Cirillo used a kitchen timer shaped like a tomato as his personal timer when he was a university student and does the method's name. The technique can help you power through distractions and get things done while taking frequent breaks. Best of all, it's probably one of the simplest productivity methods to implement since all you need is a timer. Here's how to get started with Pomodoro. Number 1. Choose a task to be accomplished. Number 2. Set the timer to 25 minutes and work until the timer rings. Number 3. Take a 5 minute break and restart the task. Number 4. Take a longer break every 4 Pomodoro sessions. Simple, right? Let's break it down a bit further. When choosing the task you want to accomplish, make sure it's just one task. If you want to study, don't check your phone or browse Facebook at the same time. You don't want to decrease your productivity by working on 5 things at once. I've already discussed how multitasking is ineffective in another video. Do what you can to minimize interruptions and make sure that everything you don't need is put away before you begin. Shut your office door, turn off your phone and close all unnecessary websites. Also, prepare everything you need for the task at hand as it will mess with your focus if you run around looking for things that you might need. Like a cooking chef, get all your ingredients ready. Another thing you would want to have at hand is a notepad and a pen. When you're working, your mind might wander off a bit. It's not uncommon to suddenly remember that you need to take out the trash, call your friend before lunch, etc. Don't allow yourself to become distracted if ideas or thoughts about other things pop into your head. Write them down on your notepad and set them aside for later. For now, focus on your set task. All right. Um, if you guys do want, if you really do like this technique, I actually was introduced to um, the technique when I was in college. Um, one of our professors got really tired of all the procrastination, and that was the first time I um, heard about it. If this is one of the techniques that you feel like will work for you, I will post the um, links. And um, you can finish watching the video later, um, you know, at your own leisure. And then I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide and give you all um, just a little breakdown of the technique if you decide that you want to use this um, for your own, you know, personal use or when you're completing your assignments. So basically, you're going to select the task that you need to complete and you're going to set the timer for 25 minutes. Notice here where it says 25 minutes. Um, you can set this um, time for something that fits you. Me personally, I actually use this um, quite often in my own life and also when um, as a student. So a lot of times I don't set mine for 25 minutes. I set mine for an hour. I can do a task and not get distracted for an hour before I need a break. If you're one of those people who needs 25 minutes, set yours to 25 minutes. If you can go an hour, two hours, do an hour, two hours. But it has to be a set amount of time where you can be productive. So make sure that you are setting a time that works for you. Just because the technique says 25 minutes, remember you can always adjust that time that will help fit your schedule or help fit your personality. All right, so after you set the timer, you're gonna work on the task. Um, when the timer um, goes off, you're gonna basically check off that item on your list. The reason checking off items on your list is even important because it gives you a sense of gratification. You have like an instant feeling of, um, okay, I've accomplished something. Because I'm accomplishing something, I wanna do more. So, you know, once you have, you know, items that you're checking off on that list, it's going to motivate you to continue. So doing that is really important. So after you do that, you can take a short break. Um, it's saying after four, you just have to be one of those people, again, decide, can you go that long before you take a break? And remember, your first break is only three to five minutes. You want to have enough of a break, especially if you're working on the computer or you've been sitting down for a while or if you're working on a task that's um, labor intensive where you'll kind of stretch, get a drink, go use the restroom, get a snack. But it's only supposed to be for a few minutes. 
So after you complete um, four or you've done a bigger chunk of your tasks, that's when you get to take a 15 to a 30 minute break. So make sure you all, um, you know, you take that break and you address your needs. As we go on, we're going to talk about some of those needs that you have, which is why um, it's important to take those breaks. So do I have any questions on the Pomodoro technique? Pomodoro technique. Okay. It looks like you guys are getting all the answers that you need. And again, I will provide you all the links for any of these techniques that we talked about today. So you can kind of go back if you decide that that's something that you think that can help you. All right, now we're going to talk about life's distractions. Um, these are some of the things that we were talking about earlier and throughout the course tonight. I've been seeing you guys, you know, talk about this as well. Some of the top distractions are people, um, your phone, your body and your environment. Um, when you say people, um, think about just, you know, anybody. It could be your coworkers. It could be your classmates. It could be your family. It could be your friends, um, your kids. I'm seeing kids, little people. Um, as a mother myself, I can completely understand that. Um, you know, it's not that your kids or your significant others or your family mean to distract you. It just happens. It's life. And, you know, those are the things that you um, kind of have to face with. So we have to think of some strategies on how we are going to help improve with some of those distractions. So some of the things that we can do um, when it comes to people distractions, when it comes to kids, that's a little bit harder because um, especially if you're, you know, a caretaker for children or even other people, you know, their needs, you have to address their needs. And um, if it's during the time you're working on an assignment or, you know, you're doing something for your job, you know, you have to be willing to kind of um, <laughs> take a break from what it is you're doing so you can address their needs. I always find the best time to work on those assignments or to um, do anything is usually when they are sleeping. That is usually the best time for you to work on assignments. Or if you have children that go to school or are in daycare, that would be another time. And then um, I think as they get older, they tend to give you, you know, a little bit more break in that sense, you can kind of, um, oh, I'm seeing night cool and milk. No, I'm not advocating that at all. <laughs> um, but you got to do what works for you. <laughs> but um, yes, you want to make sure that, you know, maybe I say when they get to about school age, um, you can get students to kind of, you know, their school age. So you can say, oh, you know, let's work on our homework together. So it's quiet time. It's like an hour, you know, a day. You can say, let's all work on our homework together. And then it can be a little distracting, especially if they need help on their homework, which is why I said sleeping tends to be, you know, the best part. But if you have a student that's really a child who is a student that's really self-sufficient in the sense of they don't always need help with their homework, that might work for you. Like I said, all the strategies won't work for everyone. Um, if you have rambunctious little ones like mine, then usually when they're sleeping is always the best strategy. So we're going to move on to your phone. If you were um, paying attention to the video before, one of the first things he said was to put away your phone and not look at it or look at Facebook. Um, and the reason for that is because it can be very distracting. You want to be able to get through, you know, a task without, you know, your phone going off or, you know, you getting so tempted to look at that notification that just popped up on your phone because we all love to look at the cute little cat videos, but sometimes they can be very distracting. So make sure that you can maybe just, you know, if you're one of those people, especially if you have people outside the home who kind of depend on you, you don't want to turn your phone off for that long. You can do it in like 15, 20 minute increments and just put it off to the side. Or I like to turn my phone on, do not disturb. And um, if somebody has like an emergency or something, it will ring twice. And then what, if somebody calls you back to back, the phone will actually ring. So that's just one of the, one of the things that kind of 
can help you out. And then your body, what I mean by your body, it's taking care of your um, needs. So, you know, if you um, need to eat, you need to use the restroom, you need to drink a water, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure um, you take care of those needs so your stomach isn't rumbling while you're trying to get your assignments done or you're really thirsty. So try to, you know, do that before you do your assignment, because if you're sitting here trying to do your assignment while you're hungry, it's going to, you don't want your project to come across as hangry. Like you don't want to be all mad <laughs> during your, while you're writing your paragraphs, because then your um, instructors are going to be like, yes, grab a Snickers. Exactly. It's going to be in your feedback. Um, you might want to grab a Snickers before you turn in your next assignment. So just make sure you take care of your needs so you can be in the best mood possible while you're working on it because you want to put your best foot forward. And then um, environment, this is a tough one, you know, because we can't always control that environment that we're in, but you can try your very best to. Um, if there's like an area of the house where you're more comfortable, that's more quiet, you should go there. If you have access to a library, um, you know, if you tend to be more focused when you're away from TV or the distractions of home, you can try that. So, you know, try to control your environment as much as you can. Um, you can't always control the people around you, but you can definitely try your very best to get away from those things that are going to distract you. And those are the life distractions. So we are going to move on. Okay, this is our other technique that I told you all that we were going to talk about. This is the urgent important matrix. Um, here, if you look at the different quadrants, um, the little boxes here, it's basically a chart where you can organize what's important, what's urgent, what really, really needs to be done. So crisis Basically, it's going to be quadrant one. Um, it could be things that are due immediately. This is something that you have to handle right now. Or you can, A, you know, fail a class, get a bad grade. Um, things would be like, you know, paying a bill or your lights or something would get shut off. Things like that fall under urgent. So you want to make sure you handle those tasks as quick as you can. And then um, the other one that is still important, but it's under goals and planning. These are the things that you have that are coming up. You still have time to get it done, but it's still really important. It's not as urgent as the first quadrant, but you still have time to get it done. So that would be under quadrant two. Quadrant three, it's urgent, but it's not important. And basically what I mean by that is, okay, think about it if you're at work and you're trying to meet a deadline or you have an assignment and you're working on something and then, you know, your coworker or a friend or a family member or somebody comes by and they start to tell you this story. And, you know, it's an important story. It might be something that you really want to know about. And, you know, it's urgent because they're right there in your face, but it's not necessarily important. So these are the things that um, we're considering interruptions. Um, while you're trying to get things done, you have these interruptions that are kind of coming your way. And then the final one is distractions. Um, distractions are going to be things that are not important and they're not urgent. So these are more things like leisure, you know, wanting to watch those cat videos on Facebook, wanting to, um, you know, scroll through your timeline and just, just, you know, kind of kick back and just, you know, cut the breeze. It's nothing, you're not doing anything really serious. It's just passing time. Those are what distractions are. Yes, squirrels and shiny things. Exactly. You know, you're looking around, you're like, oh, a squirrel. Yes, exactly like that. So this is, those are what things that fall under quadrant four. All right. I did not want to go back to our 80-20 rule just yet, but we will. Okay, so after you think about all the um, distractions and we're talking about the different interruptions and distractions, you want to make sure when you are creating your own chart 
that you keep those things in mind. If you are going to decide to use the um, urgency matrix, and let me go back so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to create a list and you're going to put the items of that list into each category. And then based on that category, that's how you will determine which one you need to address first. And that is called the urgency matrix. Um, and you can find that under um, Dr. Stephen Covey. And he basically um, was the one who um, wrote the book about the seven ha um, habits of highly effective people. You can kind of see um, this is a technique that's typically used more so in um, a lot of like, I want to say, I would say more like nine to five jobs. You'll see them use these um, to help motivate people in marketing. Um, you'll see it used a lot in a lot of business management offices where they're really, really trying to um, cut out the distractions and increase productivity. But you can also use this in your own life and also in schoolwork. So if this is something that you think that might work for you, again, I will provide those links to make sure you guys all have access to this. Now we are moving on to the one that I think you guys might have already heard of, which is the 80-20 rule. You'll often hear um, people talk about the 80-20 rule. This is very common in many industries um, and when it comes to managing your time and also when it comes to productivity for businesses, um, for customers, and whatnot. So basically, um, common in business and industry professionals, it's basically saying that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. What they're saying by that is use your time wisely. 80% um, of what it is that your life is made up of, your results that you get, should not, most of your time should not be spent idly. You should be spending most of your time working towards that 80%. So if there's something that, you know, will get you, um, resources that you need basically to pay your bills. Um, if it's something that, you know, will feed your family or feed yourself. If it's um, things like your schoolwork for you to, you know, make your overall goal in the end, those are what the 80% is made up of. If you have other, you know, things that like we were talking about, the videos and, you know, some hobbies that don't necessarily get you to those goals, those main and important goals, then most of your time should not be spent on that. That should fall under your 20% category. So um, basically, you want to make sure that you're not um, focusing too much on the category that doesn't, you know, that doesn't matter too much. You know, it's always great to have leisure time. And it's always great to um, you know, have fun, but you also want to make sure you're very balanced and that's not what the majority of the time spent. And then we're going to watch a very short video on the 80-20 rule, and then I will make sure I post that for you all as well. So in 1906, Italian economist Wilfredo Pareto found that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. Now this 80-20 distribution became quite famous for occurring over and over again in many scenarios. For example, about 20% of the world's population control about 80% of the world's income. You wear about 20% of the clothes in your wardrobe about 80% of the time. About 20% of a business's customers account for 80% of their complaints. This is known as the Pareto Principle, or the 80-20 Rule. Now, as a note, this shouldn't be taken as some sort of universal law that occurs in all situations. Exceptions can be made, and one should always be critical. But that being said, it's an extremely effective tool to analyze your own life and be more productive. Let's look at an example. Imagine you have a daily to-do list with 10 things to do every day. Using the Pareto Principle, you want to figure out what are the two most important things that will give you the majority of your results. And once you figure this out, you want to spend 80% of your effort on these two things and the rest on the remaining eight things to do. This means that even if you don't manage to complete most of the things you wanted to do, you at least get the important things out of the way. The concept is very simple, but the ways you can apply it are endless. The point here isn't the numbers, but rather to simplify your life and focus on what truly matters. 
know someone who needs to improve their productivity share this with them and give us some love by hitting that like button and if you want to see more just subscribe all right well hopefully yes and i did see that alexandria that was um really funny because right before the video played um i knew that it said that at the end and you said i know someone that can use this so that right there was really good so if you guys do want the um link for this video and you do want to share um, again, I will make sure that you all have access to those um, when I uh, post the video later in your, make sure I give it to your um, instructors as well so they can um, give you guys those links. All right, here is a priorities chart. Um, if you want to take, you know, a gander at the chart based on what we just talked about, we can kind of see if um, you know, you're kind of on the right track. So what you're going to do is there's numbers one, two, three, and four, and you're going to place the items under Tuesday night next to a number. So for example, here, the four items that I have is on a Tuesday night, these are the four things you have on your to-do list. Um, network or promote your um, brand, your week three discussion posts, you need to pack some boxes and finish a book. That's four different tasks. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, write them by urgency and importance. So we have one, two, three, and four. So you're going to write one, what do you think one should be? So if you think number one should be network or promote your brand, you're going to put number one, network, promote your brand, number two, et cetera, et cetera. So you can put all four what you all think it is. And then I'll go on to the next slide and kind of tell you what it was. I kind of want to see if our mindset has changed any after we've learned about some of these techniques tonight. All right, I'm getting a lot of people saying that number one is their week three post. All right, I got somebody that filled them all out. Number one, week three. Number two was to promote. Number three was pack. Number four was book. Right now, I'm seeing one and four being pretty consistent, but two and three are the ones that are varying. All right, I'm going to give you all about a few more seconds, and then I'm going to go ahead and move on. Book, post, network, pack, okay? I like that someone said it depends how soon the move is, and that is correct. Um, I'm going to move on to my next slide. And um, what I came up with was, one was week three post, two was pack boxes, three was network, and four was finish the book. The only reason network was up here um, as number three is because of the location. I think um, even though it wasn't urgent for you to network and promote your brand, it was important to you depending on your chosen um, industry or career. It is highly important that you get yourself out there and you have those goals um, in order for you to, um, you know, be successful in the cho chosen career field. So you have to work on those things. But, you know, also for you to get there, you have to complete school. So, of course, you're going to put your priority is going to be to complete your um, week three posts because that's due tomorrow. So you want to make sure that you get the priorities correct. And then with the pack boxes, it's in... Um, you know, it's very urgent. I wouldn't say it's as important, but it's very urgent, especially if you are moving or anything. When I say pack boxes, it's just meant to represent housework or anything that you need to get around the house, like you all were talking about cleaning out the garage and things like that. You know, um, it's not, you know, that important per se, but, you know, it can be urgent depending on what it is. You know, if you got to get your car in the garage because your HOA keeps saying you're parking on the grass, 
then you know that's pretty urgent <laughs> like to you it might not be important but to them it is so you want to make sure you do that so um you know just keep those in mind as you're creating your own priorities charts and you're creating your calendars and your to-do list all right we're gonna go ahead and move on we're going to start um talking about the week three assignments um before we do that i do want to say um um, this to everyone, make sure after you're reviewing materials, um, that includes if you go into the go to training and you attended tonight and you're going to write attended, please make sure you all are marking um, completed. A lot of people are seeing that zero. Muted. Hello, Muted. can anyone hear? Unmuted. Muted. Unmuted. Hello? Am I back? Okay, good, 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 good stuff. Perfect. Ooh, I got nervous there for a second. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and go back. I was saying for you all, after you review the materials, make sure you are hitting mark complete when it's um, in reference to like the workbook. A lot of times if you're seeing that zero, but you did review the workbook and you went through the videos and you went through the directions and you're like, why am I still getting a zero? That's because you're not hitting the mark as completed tab. So make sure you all do that. All right, now we're gonna get into the week um, three project. We're gonna start with part one. Part one is basically the um, time commitment calendar um, or the fixed commitment calendar, I should say. Um, it looks like this. So if you go through the um, steps, it's going to tell you exactly how to fill it out. And there's actually a template um, that's in the workbook. And also there's a template a PDF template that you can click on and um, fill this out and insert it into your PowerPoint. Make sure you total out the hours all the way at the bottom when you're finished with that template. I've had some students in the past that decided to create their own calendar. As long as it has the information that we're looking for, that's fine. And they decided to do this because, you know, they wanted to use this in the future for their own personal use, and I always encourage that. So if you are going to use the calendar and you want to create something that's easier for you to read, but it has all the information that we need, then that should be fine. So if you have any questions on the um, fixed commitment calendar, make sure you don't forget to calculate the total hours. 
The whole point of this is to kind of figure out how much time you have left over to dedicate towards um, your assignments. So make sure you total out those hours. It's very, very important. Yes, that's correct, Megan. You're going to calculate those hours um, that were set aside for school or that you don't. Basically, it's your low opportunity cost time. This is like the time that you have left over that is not dedicated to anything else. That's going to be the available time that you have left that you should be able to dedicate to your schoolwork. So that's like after you filled out everything that includes your sleep, you know, work, all that other good stuff. After you fill out all those things, whatever time you have left over, that's what the um, total hours should be. And yes, this can be difficult. Um, you know, your days can be really full. So it could be really, really hard to find that time. But it, this gives you an opportunity to kind of look at your day and then see what are the things that you need to dial back on. So just kind of look, you know, plan it out and see what it looks like. And this is why it's broken down by time. And then for those of you all who schedule changes throughout the week, like every week, your schedule might change um, through your job. You know, you can do last week's schedule or this week, um, you know, when you get your schedule and you can do it based around that. You know, it's not going to change. And then if it's daily, um, I would go off of last week if it's one of those schedules that tend to change. Yes, and um, Ms. Natika Jackson, one of our instructors, has made a great point in the chat box. You are not locked into your fixed schedule. Um, you know, it's just to show you how much available time that you have. So make sure, you know, you can you can always do last week and kind of give yourself an idea, or you can just kind of guesstimate and see what it will look like. Um, this is not meant to hinder you. It's meant to aid you. So you want to make sure that, you know, you kind of give you an idea to look about finding the time and to look at your schedule, like your daily schedule. Like if you break it down by the hour, it looks a lot different than if we just say in general, we don't have the time. Yeah, that can be difficult, but yeah, you can always estimate or you can um, go off of last week just to kind of give you an idea of what your weeks really look like. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see what it does look like overall. Um, and that's the whole point. That is the whole point. All right, we're going to move on to part um, two, which is for you to pick three of the time management concepts that you're going to speak about in your paragraphs and basically how you're going to be able to apply these into your life. You want to make sure that you, and these are going to be found in the workbook, so um, you don't have to go out and research and find them on your own, but, you know, always feel free if you want to learn more about something to do that. You can use some of the concepts that we talked about today as well, and just, you know, how are you going to incorporate those into your daily life or into your academic life? Um, you want to make sure you write two paragraphs per concept. And you really um, give some supportive detail and some examples from your own life or, you know, some ways that you're hoping to improve in those areas. And then finally, it's going to be part three. Um, I know earlier we were talking about those to-do lists. Um, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to create a um, to-do list. And you're going to just, you know, one side is going to be your specific area, like what you need to study, what it is that you need to do, and your personal goals for that day. And then you're going to number each one of those goals based on priority. So just like we talked about, you know, putting the top ones first, that's exactly what you're going to do with the to-do list. You're going to put the most important ones at the top of the list. 
And I'm seeing um, a lot of people have referenced the TED Talk video, which is so true. You all, please make sure you're clicking on those and you're going to find them very, very beneficial. They are in your workbooks. There's a link. And then um, they're off on the side also when you go to review your assignments. If for whatever reason that you can't find it, just let me know and I'll make sure you guys can find those TED Talk links. And they are very helpful. All right, I'm going to leave you guys with your nugget for the night. It is time management is really life management and personal management. So you all take control on the next parts of your life. And I'm hoping you all will, you know, take this opportunity to really prioritize the rest of your week, making sure that everyone that attended today will have their discussion posts done early or on time. Um, you know, it's all about taking the first steps. And I think that you all can really do that. So I'm hoping that everyone that is here tonight is going to make a commitment to turn in their post on time. Can I get a yes? Thank you. Thank you. So I'm hoping that everybody that is here tonight is going to go and turn in their post either today or tomorrow as soon as they get a chance and it's going to be done. And I love that a lot of you guys have done this already. Um, so you are right on the money. And if you have finished already, get started on your project early. You have an opportunity to ask questions tonight. If there's something you don't understand about your project, please take the time right now to ask the questions that you don't have the answers to so you can get those answers and complete your assignment. So I am so proud of everybody for committing to completing. So I might dare say you all are going to turn in your time management projects on time. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. Very good. I love this. I am so excited. So on that note, I'm going to open the floor up for questions. And if you don't have any questions, thank you so much for coming tonight. And make sure you write attended um, under the live session and have a great, productive Thank you for coming. Thank you very, very much. Thank you all. You all were a great audience. Good night, you all. Thank you so much.